Hey everybody, this is Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm talking today with Massimo. Hello. Hello, Christian. Uh, nice uh, nice to meet you. Uh, it's, uh, it's good to be here. Thank you for uh, inviting me. Oh, it's great to have you. And for, for folks that don't know you, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Who are you, where are you, and what do you do? Okay, I am Massimo Crippa. Uh, I'm uh, living uh, in uh, France, uh, Italy, and, and working in Belgium, so I'm just roaming around oh. these three countries. Uh, so sometimes it, it, it's a busy life uh, uh, traveling. Uh, I'm uh, working for a company called Codit, and uh, over there uh, it's, it's all about cloud, uh, Microsoft Cloud in this case, so Azure. And uh, we are um, focused on uh, integration, uh, IoT, and uh, app innovation, meaning uh, all of this cloud native, uh, wonderful world that I like it so badly. Well, I always like to ask too, because on Azure MVP, I mean, Azure is a big bucket. There's a lot of things within that. So kind of like, you know, what do you specifically focus on? What are you currently like writing and speaking about? Yeah, so I just uh, were very lucky to be awarded with this MVP in the uh, category of cloud native, uh, means uh, everything about uh, containerization, uh, everything about uh, uh, let's say application that scales, uh, application that uh, are elastic, uh, application that are resilient, and all of these kind of things. So I like uh, Azure Container Apps so badly, uh, Kubernetes. So uh, and that's the abstraction that uh, ACA uh, puts on top of uh, of Kubernetes. I I like also to um, of course uh, all the the CI CD story how we can uh, uh, release uh, those application. Uh, uh, in a continuous way, security is something that I like. I love to have, in general, a big picture, uh, an helicopter view on uh, the, the Azure technology, but with a focus on uh, of applications, uh, so uh, cloud native application. Well, that's great. So, uh, like, do you get into like the performance side? Do you work with customers that have built out solutions? Maybe they didn't architect it in the right way, so they're 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 having operational performance issues. Yeah, that's one of the side, but most of the time it's uh, uh, in uh, um, two things. So creating new applications, so uh, completely from scratch, from scratch, so bespoke uh, uh, kind of application. That's one case, and the other one is uh, application innovation or modernization. You know, there are a lot of different drivers why we want to move to the cloud or innovate, uh, introduce innovate in uh, in uh, in your application in your company. So these are the two main uh, tracks where uh, I, I jump in. So a lot of those things are uh, uh, API platform that I'm looking at, uh, uh, let's say um, mobile applications uh, with uh, a sort of, uh, uh, let's say scalable backend uh, uh, that is powering those, uh, let's say uh, applications uh, and solutions. You know, I, I'd say that, that that is really a core part of, you know, the whole digital transformation, which I know is overused term. But, it, you know, my, like I started my cloud journey, went to work for a startup in 2001 that had a, a, a it was a SaaS software provider right in the early days, because that, that was a SaaS as an acronym came out um, during the dot com era. So late 90s, early 2000s. And the, the fact that we're still talking about a lot of that kind of digital transformation, in the early days of Office 365 to Microsoft 365, you know, one of the reasons why these large customers were struggling to move over was because exactly what you're talking. They had built these on-prem solutions. Um, I mean, famously, painfully, um, a lot of uh, Lotus Notes users oh. that had built all of these, you know, domino-based applications. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I don't know if you ever worked in that space. Did you ever work with Lotus? I, I yes I I did um, I mean uh, it remember uh, the old times in Italy when I started I started working in IT in 2001 that, that was the the time and over there uh, all the first let's say uh, seven years or eight years of my career of course cloud uh, at, at least over there in Italy 
it was non-existing, right? So right. it was all uh, the, the classic uh, uh, data center way, uh, sizing uh, applications, uh, putting machines and there were all the virtualization and all the things coming up. So, and Lotus was something that uh, came up uh, uh, multiple times. Uh, and so, and over there, uh, we were doing uh, app enterprise application integration and uh, Lotus was always uh, uh, involved in the mix uh, there. way or the other. Yeah, well, and always ugly. And just, I'm sorry for if there's anybody that's still in that world uh is uh yeah there's no easy answer it's it was usually the answer was rebuild completely <laughs> there's no yeah, migration it, it, i should say there's you know in, in these app modernization stuff you, you know the uh, rebuild uh, is one of the 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 the, the the main, uh, the main uh, way to go especially for security for compliance and all of these kind of things uh, but of course, uh, again, uh, the, okay, I love technology so badly. I like uh, all the new things, uh, but of course we, we also have to, to stay real and, and we have to look at the value, right? So the value that the customer, uh, that we can bring to the customer and uh, there is the, the pleasure of, of technology and then there is the reality and then there is the enterprise. And that's, that's what uh, the, the customer needs because otherwise we'll, uh, yeah. It's not a, a a kids game, right? Yeah, I I, I remember this is early on. Uh, become I I was I've been an MVP since 2012, and that was around 2013 2014. I got yelled at by a senior Microsoft salesperson for scuttling a deal they were trying to put together. But I was closer to the customer, and my conversation with them is that their home built solution provided more functionality more value that they should not upgrade they should not move um, for at least a couple more years because they were it was the the cost of moving and the reduced functionality was greater than the benefits of, of moving for the time being anyway a, a angry conversation but again it was like I kept positioning like I I was interested in what's the right solution for the customer not what is Microsoft what person's trying to hit their number Exactly, that's how it should be. Uh, even if, uh, I, as, I, as I said, I really love uh, these experiment, new things, and trying to understand the 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 why behind the technology, uh, the, the, the choice or that uh, design. Of course, we should always look at the value. So I think that I read a couple of days ago that uh, LinkedIn, after all of uh, I don't know how many years they were planning to go to uh, to the cloud, let's say, yeah. now they decide to switch to to stay uh, the as is uh, yeah. on their data centers for sure. Uh, the the uh, their solution is uh, let's say uh, powered by the cloud, but cloud but, is not their major things, right? Of course, they are leveraging the clouds. Yeah, where they, it's a private they, cloud. It's dedicated cloud, private cloud, but. Yeah, for folks that aren't aware of that, it made news. Yeah, it was like a week or two ago. The yeah. fact that LinkedIn is not moving everything over to Azure, they're keeping it within their data centers that they built out when they were a standalone company, at least for the time being. And uh, again, that yeah, that that was not good PR for <laughs> Microsoft. But again, it goes to uh, you know how their s solution uh, you know was architected they made the decision that was best for their customers for the performance and cost and all those things. It's not yeah. just a done deal. Moving to the cloud is not general, always cheaper. In general, going to the cloud, or let's use again that buzzword or whatever, that app modernization or innovation is not an all-in game. Huh? Right. As, as, uh, as you know, hybrid is still a, a huge, uh, uh, a huge reality in uh, in our customers, and then uh, it's also uh, one slice, one department maybe. It's uh, it's on the cloud. Uh, I mean, it's extending uh, their solution with cloud. The other department is uh, is more uh, on uh, on premise or hybrid, and then uh, the integration uh, uh, realized the, the hybrid between the the cloud only and the premises. Uh, so th these kind of things, uh, I see it. Uh, often uh, uh, with our customers right well it, that, that's why you you need to talk to people that are again not salespeople that are just trying to hit their number but the architects that actually understand you know what might be the right solution for your company your investments maybe it's not even the most advanced features but 
you need to let it play out and get the value out of what you've already spent before you can make that decision. I mean, that's that there's no wrong answer to that. I, I would argue to those companies that are looking at keeping some components on-prem, whether it's true hybrid or not, at least to be piloting and be aware of, don't fall behind and just being aware of what's out in the cloud, pilot something, some aspect of your business. So at least okay. it'll make that future transition quicker because you're aware of what's out there. And that piloting things is where the cloud shine, right? So you you have the, the capacity, the ability, not capacity to fail fast, right? So you try out uh, and uh, then it doesn't work, it works. Uh, so you prepare yourself for uh, for the for the future, or at least you evaluate uh, uh, that technology uh, for the future. And then if it doesn't work, you know the classic uh, sales things, uh, capex versus opex, uh, and yeah. that you can uh, just try and uh, and no worries, uh, uh, experiment uh, technology, and and then you you would be able to take a better decision, right? Well, so. well, there's a there's usually a lot that you can do, even if you're again remaining on prem. I'm in the knowledge management space, the SharePoint space, and there's there's data cleanup that's you know always it's ongoing. It's just part of life. There's things that you can do. There's struck restructuring while remaining in your existing environments that will again make it a cleaner upgrade migration later. The classic a classic example is the, the, the cloud native, or if you look at Kubernetes eh, per se, so there are tons of distributions that you can, uh, uh, let's say, uh, configure, install, and, uh, on, on, and uh, run it in your on-premise things. So it's full cloud native. It follows the classic cloud native principles, uh, eh, all, all of them. But then you have all of that huge cost in, and complexity to maintain uh, that kind of infrastructure. But per se, uh, a vanilla Kubernetes or whatever distribution, certified distribution, if it's on-premises or if you have your AKS, uh, uh, Google on, on Amazon at the end, uh, the, the, the stack is the same, right? Yeah. Well, so Massimo, what was your path to becoming an MVP? I always like to ask that, like what, uh, what's your origin story? Okay. Um, like, how did you hear about the program? It's uh, uh, the thing is like uh, it's a really an uh, an an up and down, uh, so just like a roller coaster, but uh, uh, spread out uh, a lot of years. Uh. So I uh, I I just checked uh, to be honest these things a couple of days ago when I wrote the first my first blog post and and it was uh, on uh, 2007. Uh, so uh, some times ago uh, at my times in Italy and uh, but yeah. At that time, uh, after let's say ten blog posts, something like this, uh, I, I stopped. Then I moved to to Belgium. Uh, uh, I moved to Belgium in 2011. Over there, I discovered the passion for community. So I was uh, let's say very active uh, 20 between uh, 2014, 2015, and then I, I took another uh, break again because I was in consultancy business. So always, you know, hitting the car. And other excuses that I can found. Huh? Yeah, well, excuse. Course, I mean, look. Uh, yeah, I mean, we all we all know that. I mean, sometimes you get into a, a role that just sucks up all the oxygen. You're not able to do all the other stuff, and other times you find you've got more flexibility. And there's there's nothing nothing wrong with that. But when you're pursuing but, something, yeah, exactly. Then it comes back to 2023, where uh, I just moved to let's say almost a full remote role. Huh? And then uh, I, I had uh, more time to, to write down, uh, uh, to experiment uh, technology and things like this. At the same time, I, because I was remote, I had, uh, I'm a very social guy, so I had the need to, to meet people. Uh, I want to stay uh, in touch with community and things like this. And so I decided, okay, you know what, Massimo, let's uh, start uh, blog posting, uh, writing blog posts uh, seriously. So then I will use a blog post to find some session that I like. So then I can just give this session and being surrounded by, by people uh, and talk about technology. So that's what I did. I said, okay, I will, uh, I created my website. I said, okay, I will, uh, I, my goal was to write around 40 uh, blog posts per year. So I try to 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 have a goal uh, and an unreachable goal. So then I can settle with something uh, a little bit less. 
So I end up with 21 or 22 or so, I don't recall, a blog post in 2023. I did uh, some four conferences and so on. And then, uh, yes, at the end of the of the year, uh, I was talking with uh, a Microsoft uh, uh, employee and uh, we we talk about MVP, uh, there were nomination, I just uh, prepare all of my case. And then uh, I was surprised it was so fast because in January, I got that uh, that wonderful email in my inbox because I, I have no clue that uh, I, I didn't know that it was uh, on January the nomination it could have been in February. Maybe I, I don't know when it happens. If, mm. if it, if it happens. Uh, mon- um, so new ones are added monthly, but I think they I, I think Microsoft kind of took a break. There was a lot of people around and around the program like in Q4 last year. And so I, I, I think there were some people added in October, maybe in November, but nothing in December. But uh, but yeah, so it's and then it's 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 a black box to to all of us, you know, how Microsoft's process and who they're looking for and which areas and which regions of the world. But mm-hmm. I was expecting the answer in three months. It, it came uh, in uh there were Christmas holidays, so I, I was not thinking at this. I was just focused on uh, on getting back to work and I say, oh, that's a nice way to start, uh, I mean, the new year. So that's how it worked. Oh, that's cool. Congratulations again. I know, it, yeah, it, it's exciting. It's, it's uh, you know, and for, again, folks that don't know the process, um, Microsoft handles the renewals every, uh, you know, first week in July. So at, at the beginning of their fiscal year, um, which is July 1st, then they, they renew folks. Um, so but you can be added, you know, at the beginning of every month during the year. So it's, uh, yeah, so it, it's always a pleasant surprise. It's exciting to see you know, like the mix of folks coming in. And then as I do, I swoop, I look and say, Oh, Hey, new MVP, somebody I don't know, get to know them, say hello. I have to always ask that. Are you coming to the MVP summit? I am planning, uh, uh, I, I have a big dilemma. The, there is uh, the MVP summit and the week after there is uh, uh, KubeCon Europe. So I already have the tickets for uh, the KubeCon. So, but I also want to experience this uh, MVP summit uh, um, mood uh, and everything. The experience, that it comes yeah, with. yeah. So yeah, I'm, uh, I have this dilemma, but I will sort it out soon. I think uh, uh, I will be there. Well, it, the way, congratulations for your uh, 12 uh, uh, MVP. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it, it, I always tell new MVPs, like the MVP Summit, I, I think is the best of the perks of being an MVP because it's an opportunity to meet your peers from around the world, as well as the product teams, the engineering teams, you know, leadership across Microsoft. There's nothing like it it's it's uh i i realize it's uh short notice for you to be added um it, it's a long journey and an expensive journey but hopefully uh if not this year next year you'll be able to make it yes it is uh, uh, but i'm uh, i'm planning uh, uh i have a plan so let's say at uh 70 percent i will be there so i'm uh, i have to sort it out the last uh, 30 percent uh, and and then see if there will be you know like uh, the flight and all that and all of those things but yeah well i, I think I, I i hope you make it out there you know and maybe maybe i'll catch you. i know it's it's with a couple thousand mvps making it there to campus and all the microsoft people there's probably not a good chance that we'd see each other and, and being in different areas but you never know but yeah. uh, uh, Massimo, so for, for folks that want to connect with you, reach out to you, what are the best ways to reach you? Where are you most active in social? Yeah, I, I'm i most active on LinkedIn. That's the, the platform I use the most. Um, and also on Twitter. But I, I feel that, I mean, a lot of things moved from Twitter to, to LinkedIn in the, in the latest uh, years. So those are my two main channels. So Twitter and LinkedIn. Yeah, it's uh, it's still kind of the leading of the social platforms out there, although it's you know experienced a lot of change. But we'll make sure we'll have all of Massimo's uh, connections out on the blog post on BuckleyPlanet.com, uh, as well as out on uh, YouTube and on the podcast. Uh, so Massimo, really appreciate your time and and getting to meet you. And again, congratulations. Thank you, Christian, and uh, thank you again for for having me with this in this nice uh, chat. Today. Wow!